then we will find new people. They commit crimes or we find new evidence about people. Uh, they are free. We cannot bring them for justice in Germany. And this means thousands. This means thousands of people because uh, we lost 11 million witnesses. Simon Wiesenthal once said, When history looks back, I want people to know Nazis weren't able to kill millions of people and get away with it. On December 31st, 1908, in Buczaks, Ukraine, Wiesenthal was born. Growing up, Wiesenthal did not have the easiest early life. He faced many early deaths, including his father in World War I and his younger brother. Just when he thought it was over, Wiesenthal and his remaining family was moved into a ghetto and later sent to a concentration camp. While at Britiki Prison, Wiesenthal escaped from an execution with help from a Ukrainian auxiliary police officer. Following the escape, Wiesenthal was deported from Lvov to Belzec on March 15, 1942. In October 1943, Wiesenthal escaped Ostbahn but was later captured by Nazis and sent to Jankowska. With the advancing Red Army, Wiesenthal was sent to Mauthausen in Austria. Wiesenthal arrived and was immediately placed in the death block, awaiting his trip to the gas chamber. One morning, he greeted the American tanks that liberated all prisoners in Mauthausen. Simon Wiesenthal dedicated the rest of his life to bringing justice to the Jewish community and international government by abolishing the Nazi party for good. Following the liberation, Wiesenthal wrote to the camp commander, offering his services helping the hunt for Nazi criminals. When getting the job, Wiesenthal gathered and provided evidence on Nazi atrocities. He also grew influence for his leader while there, Captain Tarakuzio. In 1947, Wiesenthal left the American Army War Crimes Office after feeling it was time for him to open his own Jewish documentation center in Austria. The tasks of the documentation center produced leads on many... Nazi criminals, including Adolf Eichmann, Karl Silberbauer, and Franz Stengel. With the Cold War advancing, the center closed due to volunteers feeling their job was irrelevant. This didn't stop Wiesenthal from continuing his search for Nazis. Adolf Eichmann was the administrator of the Final Solution, which killed 8 million Jewish people. On May 11, 1960, Eichmann was arrested in Buenos Aires. Wiesenthal produced a lead on Eichmann's whereabouts after noticing the obituaries for Eichmann's parents and noticing that Eichmann was one in attendance. After the Israelis caught Eichmann, he was sent to Israel for a trial and found guilty. Eichmann's execution occurred a few years later on May 31, 1962, in Ramle Prison. Following the success of this case, the documentation center reopened in Vienna. Franz Stengel was the former commandant of Sobibor and Treblinka death camps, located in Poland. Wiesenthal was alerted by an inside source that Stengel was working for a Volkswagen company in Brazil. Stengel received life imprisonment following his trial. Simon Wiesenthal once said, If I had done nothing in my life except catch this man, I shouldn't have lived in vain. Along with the trial, Wiesenthal wrote his book, The Murders Among Us. It features the story of Nazi imprisonment. Throughout the years of searching for Nazis, Wiesenthal published books describing his experiences. One of the best-selling was his autobiography, Justice, Not Vengeance. I didn't know what to do with my life. I had no one left I wanted to live for. Further success came his way when winning the Dutch Freedom Medal, Luxembourg Freedom Medal, United Nation League for the Help of Refugees Award, United States Congressional Medal, and the French Lint of Honor. In 1977, the Simon Wiesenthal Center opened in Los Angeles. Simon Wiesenthal had the chance to open and visit the center. A few years later, Simon and the center produced the documentary, Genocide. The center is still open to this day, and their missions generate change through the Snyder Social Action Institute. In 2003, Wiesenthal finally announced his retirement. Two years later, on September 20th, 2005, Simon died at age 96 in the comfort of his home. Although Simon was only one person, his actions spread and caused a revolution of hunting down Nazis and bringing justice to those affected by them. The leads, books, and movies informed people of the horrific events and how they can help change it. 
Simon dedicated his life for his friends, family, and others who died or knew someone who died. If Simon never survived the Holocaust or contributed his life to hunting, then the Nazis who survived could have restored the growth of the Nazi party and they would still be around to this day. Last office in the world. And because this is the last office, you cannot close the office.